Hey, we're here. Sorry. We're here to see, uh, we're going to the Alamo Road Show here, uh, um, the deliberations of Jerry and see. What's it called? They only come out at night or some shit? What is this? It comes at night. It yeah, comes yeah, yeah. at night. The new Joel Edgerton R. Hand over real quick. What? You can go back now. I just want to do that. Okay. <laughs> That's patience by the camera. They put us all on a bus headed out to parts unknown. They just said in the middle of the woods to watch this presumably scary horror film. Well, we're going to take a look here at what the experience is like, and, uh, well, hopefully you'll get some idea what it's like to get an Alamo Roadshow invite-only trip to a new premiere of a big horror film. Check it out. Free drinks. I think they took us to a real-life hobo camp. <laughs> I really hope so. <laughs> Hi. Get your get your water and your gas mask. Yeah, we're getting ready to leave the bus. We don't know where we are. Nope. Somewhere. So look, oh god, there's a bus right behind you. Full of vagrants. Oh, they got a little, uh, little uh, campsite light. What's it called? A little fake kerosene light. Oh, yeah. <laughs> a lantern. <laughs> We really have no idea where we are, or what's going to happen. Nice driving, by the way. All right, man. Thanks, man. All right. intimidating sound. <laughs> I think that Will and I should be the only ones who go outside for a while. We don't know what made Stanley sick. We don't know anything. Nobody touched him, so I think we're fine, right? Positive. You just opened the door, right? You didn't go in. I didn't touch the door. You said, what? It was, it was already open. What? The door was already open when you got there? Yeah. Then who opened it? If you're lying to me, I will kill you. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. I think bits and pieces of the story were brewing with me for a while. Um, 
I saw people in this house in the middle of the nowhere during this apocalyptic thing. I didn't know why, because I didn't even watch that many post-apocalyptic movies or anything. Um, and then I lost my dad. Uh, my dad, who I had a, a weird relationship with, who inspired a lot of Cretia. Um, and it was one of the most traumatic experiences I've ever gone through. And uh, a month or two after that, I just started writing. And it started with that opening scene where Sarah's kind of saying goodbye to her dad and it was stuff I was saying to my dad. And then this, after that, this entire fictional story came out of it. Combined with that, I was looking, you know, I was reading books on genocide and looking at this painting from Peter Bruegel from, called Triumph of Death, which is actually in the movie. Um, and just thinking about a lot of heavy shit, like fear and death and regret and family and um, and ultimately uh, fear of the unknown. Big important thing with it is we wanted to really feel the night. Um, I feel like you guys experienced that a bit, just walking up here with the lanterns and the darkness and the woods and it was like, that's, that's how I wanted the movie to feel, you know? And my DP and I talked about that a lot and there's something so fucking scary just going through the woods with one light really feeling the darkness and the unknown and everything around you. I hope I made a movie that sticks with you and that you can think about and see again. So guys, we just came back from this. What do you think? Um, I had a lot of free drinks. I had a, I had to pee in a porta potty. The film itself was uh, sure. It was interesting. I I thought it was it was fun, dark. Well, not fun. But it was dark and scary, and the sound design was creepy, and uh, the atmosphere was awesome, and it was a uh, a good, uh, good, fun-filled, terror-filled uh, experience. Was, was it cool. really terror-filled? Yeah, I thought so. I thought the uh, starkness of it was scary, and I thought that um, the sound design made it really creepy. And, uh, I thought it was cool. Right on. So people should go see this. I think so. Jeez. She's disagreeing. She's mixed. <laughs> I thought it was cool. What are the deliberations of doom on the this Doom one? Patrol! I thought um, it was cool. I will give it a seven creepy red doors out of ten. So you should go see it if you give it a seven out of ten. I mean, they passed the test. It's a fucking C. Well, you can get into college it's with a C. C. It's a C minus. It's a C. It doesn't matter. You're it's good. technically a C minus. Um, I liked it. I mean, uh, I feel like I'd give it a 7 out of 10 too, but I actually liked the movie. So, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what your rating is at. I mean, it's weird because we're always agreeing with each other. So, that's we agreed with each other, but just in different weird ways. I, 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 I liked it. I thought for the artistry and what it is, and I thought coming from where uh, he was coming from, I thought it was uh, some cool stuff in there. So, I, I enjoyed it. Um, I had fun. Yeah. And how was the experience of going yeah. out in the woods? That was, awesome. that was, yeah. that was the very best part. For me. Lots of free beer. Yeah. Uh, did yeah. I mention there was a lot of free beer? A lot of free beer. It was very cool. Um, and we had snacks, and we got to ride on a school bus, and Phil almost died like at least once. I almost killed somebody once too. <laughs> it's crazy, but it was fun. It was good times, and uh, the draft house put on a fantastic event. And, Always. Uh, man. What do you good think, times. Chris? Yeah, I, I thought it was pretty good. I mean, like, it was uh, the, lots of great performances from all the actors. Joel Edgerton seems to have a thing like, I kind of like horror now. Yeah, overall, I don't think it's really a traditional horror film in any sense. That but is that a bad to. thing? No. Not necessarily. It's more, of a, it's more of a drama with horror elements yeah. to it, to be sure. And it is creepy, and it is very bottle filmish like everybody's stuck in a very claustrophobic space it's all set kind of from the viewpoint to some extent of the teenage son of joel edgerton who is regularly having hallucinations which was my favorite part dreams. i feel like the nightmares were my favorite part and that and the post-apocalyptic shit yeah stuff yeah shit. it's it's definitely those were the, the yeah. more horror yeah. element parts of it but overall it's it felt like we were saying something about like, why can't we just learn to trust each other instead of just immediately assuming everything is for the worst, which seems pretty accurate for the time. In which case, it was very Walking Dead. Yeah. And they gave us gas masks. Mm. That's uh -huh. not quite a gas mask, but I mean, that'll work. <laughs> All right. Let's well, go. signing Let's go off. Drink. Yeah. We're going to go drink.